Hi everyone. So in the previous video, we concluded with a formula, right, for the definition of a derivative function, right? And we came to that formula by using the concept of a limit, right? So namely, we said that if we want the equation of the derivative function from first principles, we're going to be using, right, f prime of x is equals to the limits as h tends to zero of a function f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h right so now recall that because we are evaluating a limit right that means that we are looking at what happens when h gets closer and closer to zero right so when we do these calculations right we won't be allowed to directly plug in right h is equals to zero if doing so results in division by zero okay this is the same concept as with evaluating just normal limits okay so let's now jump straight into uh, examples right so the first example the instruction for all these examples is going to be exactly the same right so we're basically finding the derivative of a given equation using first principles right so in the first example we just have a simple um, parabola right so we have f of x is equals to 5x squared okay so now if you look at our formula for the derivative okay by first principle we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h okay so now when you look at this formula you already have okay your f of x right the only thing you need is a f of x plus h and what that notation means is that go to your original f function and where you see it x substitute x plus h right so that's going to be our first step okay so f of x plus h okay is equals to 5 times x plus h squared Okay. Now we have a binomial squared and we just expand that out. That's going to be equals to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay. Then we can distribute the 5 into the bracket giving us 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared. Okay. So now we have the two parts of our formula we have our f of x and we have our f of x plus h now we're just simply going to substitute okay so we're going to write down f prime of x right is equal to the limit as h tends to zero right and then substitute the equation for f of x plus h that is 5x squared plus 10x h plus 5h squared okay then we're going to subtract f of x right which is simply just 5x squared okay we're going to divide this whole thing by h okay now because this is a limit right remember when you go back to the video on limits we said that the way that we evaluate limits is firstly just simply by direct substitution and secondly by manipulation if direct substitution leads to division by zero okay so now if you see in this case at the moment if you do direct substitution you'll be dividing by zero right which means that the numerator needs a little bit of manipulation okay so let's see if we can clean up the numerator a little bit um, the easiest thing to do is to just cancel out the 5 positive 5x squared with the negative 5x squared okay that leaves you with um, 10xh plus 5h squared okay but between those two terms, there's a common factor of h, so we can pull that out. So we have the limit, right, as h tends to 0, right, of h into 10x plus 5h, right? This is all divided by h, okay? Now we can see that our h is now nicely isolated, so we can cancel it out right so the h in the numerator cancels out with the h in the denominator which leaves you with evaluating the limit as h tends to zero of just 10x plus 5h okay and now when you do direct substitution there is no division by zero so you can simply just substitute uh, zero for h so this will give you 10x plus 5 times 0, right? And 5 times 0 will be 0. So the equation of our derivative function, so f prime of x, right, is equals to 10x, 
simplifies. So that's the equation of the derivative function. And notice that when you get this, right, you need to understand what it means, right? This is a derivative function, right? This means that it is a function, right, that is going to be able to tell you, right, not only just the instantaneous rate of change along the curve, but more importantly, what we are going to use is going to tell you the gradient of tangent lines, right, at any given point along your original function f of x, right? So please acknowledge that fact that this simple little equation that you have has the power of calculating a gradient of a tangent line for you, okay? So in the next lesson, we'll be able to verify, okay, that um, this is the equation of the gradient function, right, um, by using the rules of differentiation. But we'll get to that um, in the next lesson. Let's go to the next example. Okay. So example number two, we have f of x is equals to minus 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay. In this case, we still have a quadratic, right? But in, now we have, like we've seen the quadratic before, it has a values, B values, and C values, okay? So going back again to our definition of a derivative, if prime of X is equal to the limit as H tends to zero of F of X plus H minus F of X all divided by H, okay? You have your F of X, right? It's given to you, right? The only thing you need to do is to calculate your F of X plus H, okay? So that means that we're going to go to our initial f of x. We're going to substitute wherever we see uh, x, we're going to substitute x plus h, right? So we're going to have 2 multiplied by x plus h, which we have to square, right? Plus 3 times x plus h, right? Plus 1, okay? Then let's first start off by uh, expanding out our binomial. We know that that's going to expand out to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, right? Then we can, in the second term, we could just simply just distribute that 3 into the bracket, giving us 3x plus 3h, right? And we have a constant of plus 1, right? Now we're in the position to distribute the negative 2 into our first bracket, giving us minus 2x squared plus 2, sorry, uh, minus 4xh, right, uh, minus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 1. Okay, now we're going back to basic algebra from grade 8, we have to now collect like terms, right? So we have a minus 2x squared. There's nothing else in this problem that has an x squared in it. So that just drops down. So minus 2x squared, okay? Then we have a minus 4xh, right? And there's nothing else that has xh in it. So that just drops down. So minus 4xh, right? Then we have a minus 2h squared. Actually, there's no common t um, terms that we can collect with this. So f of x plus h is simply just that expression, okay? Now we can substitute into our formula, right? So if prime of x, right, is equal to the limit, as h tends to 0, right, of f of x plus h, which is this long um, expression here above. So it's minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 1, right? And to that we need to minus, right, um, f of x. And f of x is minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. All of this needs to be divided by h. Okay. And obviously, at this point, direct substitution will not work. So let's do a little bit of cleaning up. Okay. We can distribute that negative into um, the second bracket.
okay and that's what we have okay now we see that um, the minus 2x squared cancels out with a 2x squared okay the positive 3x cancels out with the minus 3x okay uh, and lastly the positive constant 1 uh, cancels out with the minus 1 okay so now we have just an expression that has h's in it so right so we have the limit as h tends to 0 okay just note don't drop um, this limit until you are able to do direct substitution that doesn't lead by division by 0 so every time you are manipulating you need to write limit limit don't drop it okay okay so we have the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 4xh minus 2h squared plus 3h all of this is divided by h okay we now see that we can pull out a common factor of h from our terms so we have the limit as h tends to 0 pull out a common factor of h you'll be left with minus 4x minus 2h plus 3 okay all of this must be divided by h okay now at this point our h can cancel out like we saw previously so we have the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 4x minus 2h plus 3 okay now we're at the position to do direct substitution that doesn't lead to division by 0 okay so we have 4x minus 2 times 0 plus 3 okay that middle term will go to 0 so we are left with just minus 4x plus 3 okay and that is the equation of f prime of x right okay moving on to example number three right so example number three we are asked to differentiate g of x is equals to x squared minus 2x right again um, we are given our original function right it's just that at this point they are now calling it g of x right which means that we need to carry on with that naming system and call our derivative function as g prime of x okay so we just need to calculate g of x plus h right so everywhere where we see an x we're going to substitute x plus h okay so that's going to give us g of x plus h is equals to x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h right we know that this is going to simplify out as x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h okay again there's no common terms that we can collect and bring together so we're just simply going to go into g prime of x is equal to the limit of as h tends to zero right of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h right minus x squared minus 2x okay that's in brackets right then we can distribute that negative into the brackets leading us to um, the limit as h tends to 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h minus x squared plus 2x all of those divided by h okay when we clean up we can see that the uh, x squared cancels out with the negative x squared and the negative 2x cancels out with the 2x and there's nothing else right so we are now left with the limits as h tends to 0 of 2xh plus h squared minus 2h Okay, this is all still divided by 0. We can then pull out that common factor of an h. Um, so we have equals the limit as h tends to 0, right, of h into 2x, right, plus h minus 2. Okay, this is all divided by h. Okay, so the h's cancel out, so we have the limit as h tends to 0 of 2x plus h minus 2. Okay, now we can do direct substitution because direct substitution doesn't lead to division by 0. Okay, so we have 2x plus 0 minus 2 
right which is just simply g prime of x is equal to 2x minus 2 okay and you're done okay and the last type of um, function that they require you to know how to do through first principle is um, the function 1 over x okay so we've now called it k of x is equals to 1 over x and we want to know what is its derivative okay again we'll just go k of x plus h right this is just equals to 1 over x plus h very simple okay so k prime of x is equals to k of x plus h is 1 over x plus h right this is minus uh, k of x which is 1 over x all divided by h right so in our okay so in our numerator we see that we are subtracting two fractions right so we need to get a common denominator right the common denominator is just going to be the product of those two denominators right so we're going to have the limit right as h tends to zero right of x divided by x plus h times x right this is minus x plus h divided by x times x plus h right this is then all divided by h okay so we have the limit as h tends to zero right now the denominators are the same so we can just subtract um, our numerator so we have x minus x minus h okay divided by x times x plus h this is all still divided by h okay so we have the limit as h tends to zero right x minus x will be zero leaving us with just minus h in the numerator this is divided by x times x plus h right then let's just now uh, flip and multiply with our denominator so we can have this as times 1 over h okay because we're dividing a complex fraction by another fraction if you can't see it put a 1 over that h right so you're dividing by another fraction that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal which is 1 over h okay once you've done that you'll see that your h's will cancel out right so we have the limit as h tends to 0 right of minus 1 okay divided by x times x plus h right and now don't be scared and think that um, this is going to lead to a division by 0 just because h is in the denominator it won't because h is not alone in a denominator it's in a bracket with a friend right and its friend is x right so actually when you substitute 0 in there you get x right so we can do direct substitution. This will then be minus 1 divided by x times x plus 0, right? Which is just negative 1 divided by x times x, right? And our laws of exponents tell us that when we are multiplying, right, bases that are the same, we add the exponents. So we have negative 1 divided by x squared. Okay. And that brings us to the end of using the definition of a derivative or in other words differentiation from first principle in the next video we're going to look at how to evaluate the derivative function in other words come to the same equation of a derivative function okay using the rules of differentiation and those are very nice see you next time